Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you guys and us TPP public lecture. Um, we're today we're going to talk about technologies and innovations and also taxations. But before that, I would like to ex to introduce myself. My name is Dia Sukmarani, and today I am will be your um, moderator for today's public lecture. I'm also one of the students in this GPP School of Government and Public Policy. One of one of the things that I remember in his GPP on one of the lecture on um, innovations and development for sustainable innovation and technologies for sustainable development class is that we learn um, the innovations and technology is important for our productivity and um, efficiency as a nation and will simultaneously increase our economy um, our economic growth so our country can invest more on its people then at the end we could achieve the sustainable development goals pledge to leave no one behind well as we talk uh, about sustainable development earlier i believe more people are joining us today i would like to welcome again to our audience who just joining us this morning <laughs> For us to have an enjoyable and organized discussion, there are a few guidelines for panelists that join us on Zoom. First, please do not click share screen in any circumstances. And to reduce network usage and prevent unnecessary interruption, please leave video and your microphone off until you are given a chance to ask questions. As we'd love to hear from you, we will have the Q&A segment right after the presentation. To ask questions during Q&A segment, you can select participant and on the bottom, on the button or the feature, you will find a raised hand will be visible on the bottom. Please keep your question concise and quick. And then we're continuing to talk about our topics today. All right, regarding of our topic on digital technologies in current global context, it is nice to look back when before digital technologies has existed then realize technology has changed our life in so many different ways. It changed the way we shop, it changed the way we transport, it even changed the way we study. If we put into context of taxation, before the technologies, we have to come to the taxation office and do some administration and paperwork and standing in the long queue just to pay our taxes. Especially in the business sector, there's so many and various types of taxes that the company and businesses need to manage and pay uh, in resulting in over 5 million uh, companies existed in Indonesia only 10 percent of them are paying the taxes today we have option to pay our taxes online we can do it anywhere and easier paying taxes doesn't hurtful as it used to one of the directorate general of taxation official partner is online pajak online pajak is a web-based application that allows its user to prepare, pay, and file their taxes online. We are very lucky today because our speakers is one of the expert in sector and the in the company. Today we have Charles Gino, the founder and the CEO of Online Pajak. He is a 2019 Generation T Indonesian honoree. He was also selected in the 66 International Selections Panel in Boston, Massachusetts, in 2016. Today. He will be sharing with us his expert opinion on how online pajak fill the gap in improving tax collection in Indonesia. We are pleased to welcome Mr. Gino. Thanks, Dia. Can you hear me well? Yes, your voice is very clear. Okay, good. Uh, if you don't mind, I will still share my screen. I have prepared a, a presentation. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, great. So hold on. Uh, aha. Uh, hold on a minute. Uh, 
this is technology. Okay, so while, while we are setting up the, the, the presentation, uh, I, I want to say that I really encourage you to, to ask me questions. I, I will make a few, uh, I, will, I will go through a few slides, uh, but, but really it's going to be more interesting if you guys ask me some questions. There is no uh, topic that we cannot address, so feel free to shoot uh, and, and, uh, and I will gladly answer your questions. Here we go. Thanks, uh, Dia. Okay, uh, so let's dive in. Uh, today we're going to talk about the, the, the how we apply disruptive technology in online pajak. But first, I really want to emphasize that today uh, disruption is everywhere. In terms of technology, you can simply take any topic and there is a disruption happening. Whether it's because of automations where we, with the robotics, with software, through artificial intelligence and big data, through virtualization that led to 3D printing, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, Internet of Things. Biotechnology is going through an enormous change as well today uh, with genome editing and, and technologies that are going to transform the way we think about medicine, the way we think about healthcare in general. Of course, you also have all the clean energy and green tech uh, revolution happening with, with solar panel efficiency that is uh, getting better basically every day. And that is also going to be an enormous change. But, but really, every single topic uh, you can think about today is going through a massive change. Uh, I think we've never seen in the, in the human history or, or in any form of history such a speed in transformation all the technologies are, are, are coming together in a way thanks to communication uh, tools that we have today. Um, I, I see everyday articles about how artificial intelligence is being applied to medicine, uh, how 3D printing is combined all, again with big data or Internet of Things. Uh, and, and so all these technologies are coming together uh, are, are self-enriching and the different fields are, 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 are creating this ecosystem and, and this energy that we see today. And really, we are in, in an area where everything is going to change very fast. Uh, I, I want to emphasize as well that this is an exponential uh, 
effect. Meaning it's not going to go uh, simply faster. It's going to go faster and faster and faster and faster. Uh, there is simply no limit, I think, today in what in in what the in in the amount of things that are going to change. And I think we are really in, into one of the most exciting generations of human history today. Uh, we, we, I, I, I'm a bit older than you, so I was born, there was simply no phones, uh, there was no internet, and, and if you look at it today, the speed at which we are doing things compared to what we were doing before, ju just imagine that, that a few years back, if you wanted to have, a meet, to have a meeting with someone, you actually had to set up the meeting a few weeks in advance, and make sure you were on time uh, where, where you were supposed to meet. Now you can adjust the meeting at the last minute simply by having a little call or a little text. So really, we are in the phase where disruption is everywhere and not only, uh, not only on software. It's absolutely everywhere and that's the most exciting times uh, we, we are living today. Uh, let, let's dive in now uh, a bit more on what we are doing in online Pajak. If we can uh, just move to the next slide. So this is a bit what I want to talk about today. Uh, of course, we are a tech company and we are, we are mostly talking about software. Uh, so I'll go, I'll go through a bit of history about software. Uh, there, there are what we call Internet 2.0 and things like that. So I, I just want to, to pause a bit and, and just look back at what we mean when we talk about technology. Um, basically, at the beginning of, uh, of Internet, you had uh, what we call Internet 1.0. It was mainly static content. So this is really the background, la the background layer, the technological layer of what we used uh, to call Internet 1.0. Uh, you had static content that could not be modified easily by the, by the visitors of the website. And that led to a lot of, of company uh, websites that were mostly an online presentation, uh, online company profiles. Then you had something uh, that started to appear, a, a new form of technology that basically allowed the visitors of the website to modify the content. Uh, the, the technologies that, we've, with, that we saw at that time was PHP, Java, and, and you also you had some, some databases that were mostly uh, targeting online applications like MySQL, and, and that got us to blogs, wikis, social networks like Facebook and, and Twitter. Uh, this is typically the kind of, of website that, that we flag today as Internet 2.0. Then little by little, and that's really where we are getting today, you get content that is uh, absolutely everywhere because mobile technology came in. Uh, so it's not only an online experience, it's also a mobile experience and sometimes even offline. Uh, and also you have the technology that is called artificial intelligence and big data. And so the main topic, uh, the main usage of artificial intelligence and big data today is to have targeted content. Before you really used to have something that was a kind of a, of carpet bombing of emailing, uh, and that is a lot of spam. Now more and more websites are, are looking at what you like, looking at what you're buying, to offer you some things that is more likely to be relevant to you. Uh, that that's really the heart of what we call Internet 3.0. Uh, it's really this backend technology of, of uh, having the mobile, having multiple channels, combining that experience and having a layer of artificial intelligence on top of it to make the experience unique for you. Uh, that, that is really where we are today. Uh, tomorrow, we, and, and it's really starting now as well, but, but I think it's going to explode. You will have more and more what we call the Internet of Things. Uh, it's a machine-to-machine -machine communication. So you start to see some smartwatch. Uh, you start to see some smart cars. The, these are tools, everyday life tools, that are going to be connected. Uh, and once they are connected, they start to feed data to each other. And so your experience uh, globally is going to combine absolutely everything. If you start to have a connected fridge, uh, basically, when you use your connected fridge, the data is going to be collected. 
and and based on what you take out of the fridge uh, you will start to receive messages uh, that are offering new products that you could be interested in or simply if you have no eggs anymore you can buy new eggs automatically that's really where we are going uh, and so ju i just wanted in this slide to give you a bit of history uh, of what we call software and the evolution if we move to the next slide Hello, hello. Can, can we move to the next slide? Ah, the, the, sorry, the one before. Yeah, this one. Uh, thank you. Um, so in, in, in that slide, basically, you start to see, I don't know, there is a, I don't, I don't know if everybody can see what's on the right. I have a, a black, uh, a black, uh, data here, a black box. Is it just me? Okay, well, I'll try, I'll try to explain. What, what you see here is, is the evolution of uh, market cap of the, of the top 10 companies in the world. Market cap is, of course, the valuation of the company. Uh, and what you see in red are software companies, meaning Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Microsoft. Uh, the gray ones uh, mostly used to be oil and gas companies or uh, big brands like Coca-Cola, Nestle, uh, that are more in traditional space. A and you can see the trend in the last, uh, in the just the last 10, 10, 20 years, 10, 20, 10, 15 years, where basically little by little software is, is absolutely uh, killing the rest uh, of traditional industries. Uh, you can see that the market cap of the, of the big four uh, technology companies is more sometimes more than double or triple the market cap of what used to be traditional companies. And so in a way, you really need to think of a world where you have to compete for talent acquisition, for, for technology, uh, for, for patents. On, you, you have to compete with companies that have access to resources that are two or three times bigger than yours. Uh, and so this is really where it's going to be a bit, uh, a bit scary. Uh, that simply you, you, you cannot say I'm not interested in technology, I, I'm, I don't understand anything about a computer, because if you don't, you're simply out of the system. You absolutely, absolutely need to understand technology, because by, by default, the, the technology companies, the technology is going to take everything. And, and really, you can see it in the trend. These companies have, again, an exponential growth. You can really see the curve that is going to the roof. Whereas the other, the normal companies basically are staying flat. And if you don't ride the wave of becoming exponential and riding on technology, uh, you're simply going to be left out. And that's exactly what we are starting to see with the automotive industry, where now you have a, a, a company that was born two or three years ago, like Tesla, that is competing and, and most of the time beating very traditional companies like, 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 uh, like the car manufacturers that we all know that have been there for 20 or 30 years or even more and, and that are simply left behind compared to, to, to the new technological wave uh, that, that we see coming in, in companies like Tesla. Ah, yes, thank you. Uh, and that, that is really where, where what I want to emphasize. Today, it's not whether you like it or not. It's you have to be a technological player to win. Uh, if, you're not, if you don't have a, a 360 view of your customer, if you don't have a multi-channel communication, you're simply going to be left behind. And, and that is really the proof that we, that we see in, in simply the market cap of, of these companies. 
Thanks. Let's go to the next slide. Here, this is uh, a, a little zoom on Southeast Asia. Um, Garuta Indonesia was founded in 1949, and today the valuation of the company is about 600 million. Traveloka was, was founded in 2012, and their valuation is 4 billion. Same, Bluebird was founded in 1965, valuation about 700 million. Gojek and Grab were founded in 2010 and 12, and they have a valuation of more than $10 billion. So again, software is absolutely eating the world. Uh, you have companies like Traveloka that are selling tickets, uh, and they are selling Garuda's tickets, uh, not only, but also. They don't have any plane. They don't have any airport fee. They don't have anything. They just have customers and users of their portal. Grab Gojek, they don't have a single motorbike. Uh, whereas Bluebird, they have a fleet of taxis. So this is really the trend that we are seeing. Uh, being a software company is no longer an option somehow. There is not one single company or one single industry that can afford not to be playing in the technical space. Thanks. Next, uh, let's go to the next slide. So let's look at, at what it means to be a digital company. Uh, first, a tech, you, you really need to make the distinction between a tech company and a digital company. A tech company is a company that is uh, only engineers, basically, and that is focused on building deep tech, what we call deep tech components, like facial recognition, uh, automatic uh, email marketing and these kind of things. These are really the basic blocks of technology, uh, but, but these are only bricks. They are not a product in a way. Uh, then you have digital company. A digital company is a company that will assemble these, these components to create an experience. And, and I really want to emphasize on the notion of experience. Today, you, you don't really create a product. Uh, especially in tech, you create an experience. Uh, look, look how Apple is doing it. They are not selling you an iPhone. They are, they are selling you the fact that you go to an Apple store with a clean design, that you have, a, you have a, of course, looked at the product online in a clean website. And then finally, you go on the, on, buy, to buy your iPhone. With that iPhone, you can download apps that are on the marketplace. And so, all that combined creates an experience for you. You're, you're not buying the iPhone. You're really buying the experience of buying the iPhone in a way. And, and that is the heart of how a digital company thinks today. The customer experience is at the center of absolutely everything. Uh, again, a company like Traveloka, Gojek, and Grab, they are so successful because the application is very simple. Uh, you get the full package inside one simple application. In a few clicks, basically, you either get your ride or your food delivered. And that is that experience that you're buying. You're, you're not buying the app. You're buying the experience. Another, another key driver, basically, of a, of a digital company is that the cost of serving plus one is almost zero. Uh, what I mean by that is that you can, you can do one... Uh, ride with Gojek or, or, or 200 million, the cost is going to be basically the same. Uh, apart from a few server costs, honestly, the cost is not going to be there. What costs a lot of money is the research and the development, is how you're going to think about the design of the product, how you're going to code the map integration, uh, how you're going to make sure that you store the, the data in the, in the database in the right model. And this is really what costs something for, for a digital company. It's the R&D. But once you've delivered your engine, once you've delivered the, the little robot that is that piece of software, whether you do one or 20 or 300 or millions, it's not going to make a big difference. And that's, that's why also these companies can be exponential. So Finally, I want to make to, to, to just re-emphasize on, on the positioning of a digital company. A digital company 
is mostly today architected around the idea of displacement of traditional intermediaries. Traveloka is displacing traditional uh, travel agencies and airline companies. Gojek and Grab and, and, and uh, other ride-hailing companies are displacing the relationship you have with taxi companies or, or with the OJEX, traditional OJEX. And so their heart, the heart of every digital company is that experience. If you as a user or as a customer are not happy with your experience with Gojek, Grab or Traveloka tomorrow, you will leave. And so they are fighting very, very, very hard to make sure your experience is top. And that is really the heart of the mindset of a digital company. One other trend, one other thing that we are, we are, we are really seeing that I think is, is really changing the, the, the dynamics of how you build something today is that you are no longer building a product uh, or, or, or even an experience. You're, you're really building an experimentation. Uh, and that's the whole philosophy that is behind what we call agile methodologies. You, you, don't, uh, you don't launch a product and then sleep on it. If you have millions of visitors on the website today, you can easily launch three, four, five, ten different versions of the same product to, to different people. And based on you launching multiple versions, then you simply can compare statistically with real data what is the version that works best. Imagine that I think Google at some point probably spent a, a lot of time making an experiment just looking at what color uh, what type of blue should be the links for ads when, when you open a, a Google search. But they can do that in, in a few seconds. They have so many searches per minute or per day or per second that they can launch an experiment for every single different type of blue there is, and they would get a result that finds the best type of blue uh, that works for, for higher click rate, basically. And so, Again, you're never finished. You never feel that you've, you, you've delivered the product. You constantly build new experimentations and you constantly refine your product based uh, on, on what you're learning, basically. That, that's also part of the, of the DNA, I would say, of a digital company. Let, let's move to the next slide. So now let, let's look a bit at what we are doing in Online Pajak. So, so, uh, we, we are not a tax application. I want to, to get this out of the, of the out immediately. Uh, we are clearly not a tax application. We are a nation game changer. And so why, why are we online, Pajak? Why are we simply existing? So I, I basically I've been in Indonesia for eight years now. Um, I, I did open a first company there a few times a few years ago. And quickly, I realized that simply paying my taxes or, or dealing with the tax administration process was, was honestly not that easy. Uh, and from there, working with the tax office, we, we came up with the idea to try to build an online, a bit user-friendly application for, for Indonesian uh, to handle their taxes. While I was exploring the topic, basically, I came to realize that taxation is actually an interesting topic, even though it seems a bit... Uh, a bit weird and difficult, it's actually a very interesting topic, and especially in countries like Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia, the, the tax to GDP ratio is, is not, not even 10%, and it's going down every year. As a comparison, Singapore, the tax to GDP ratio would be 30%, and my home country, France, would be 60%. And so, of course, if, if no one is paying taxes and if you have no revenue coming for the state, you have no roads, you have no health care, and you have no education. I, I, I was amazed uh, when, I, when I saw that President Jokowi has decided to allocate 20% of the state budget to education. And I think this is exactly what needs to be done today. But 20% of not much is still not much. And that's exactly why we are here. Uh, I, I want to make sure that we provide enough revenue for Indonesia and the state so that we can deliver a society that is more fair, that protects, uh, protects the weak, 
uh, and, and making sure that we don't have insane inequalities between, between the different uh, layers of society. And so that's exactly what we are doing. And how we are doing that is really through technology. Again, if you recall what I said, we are 100% focused on creating a digital experience. Uh, creating a digital experience in tax is not easy, but, but the core of our thesis, the core of what we are, is to say, of course, nobody likes to pay taxes, but if on top of that, uh, the process of paying taxes is a pain, then, of course, no one is going to do it. Uh, one simple example of what we are doing is I, I, I've been actually to, to local tax offices. And, and, you know, if you want to apply for tax ID and NPWP in Indonesia, uh, the first question that we ask you is, what is your email address? And I witnessed with my own eyes some local tax offices. I, I saw some people that were a bit old. They simply don't have an email address. They have a phone number. So, boom, the first question, immediately, you ruled out some people that eventually wanted to be compliant and pay their taxes. Then the second question was, are you an individual or a corporate taxpayer? Today, I still don't know if a Gojek driver should register as, uh, as uh, an individual or as a corporate taxpayer. So this is exactly that experience that I was talking about. In two questions, the first two questions that you have to face when you deal with the tax office in terms of tax compliance process, in only two questions, you probably ruled out all the small, super small taxpayers that wanted to be compliant. And so what we are doing is finding ways to simplify, simplify, simplify the tax to the extreme. And, and that is exactly in line with what I told you before. We are creating an experience for taxpayers to handle their tax compliance without being stressed out, without being scared that they are going to miss something, that they are not going to fill a form, and they are going to be penalized tomorrow. And, and that is really the heart of, of us being a digital company, is we are simplifying the, the tax compliance process to the extreme so that anybody, whether you're a tax expert or whether you're, you're, you're simply your, your little shop in the middle of, of Java, you can still handle your taxes because it's fully automated and, and you don't have to fill forms every time uh, for, for hours and hours and hours. And so that is really the heart of what we are doing. Now, if we project ourselves to the future, if you go to the next slide. Today, today last year, actually, we processed about 120 trillion rupiah of tax. Uh, that, that's on about 10% about of the total tax collection of the country. And, and tax represents about 80% uh, yeah, 80 percent of the state budget. So, so in a way, we've collected uh, eight percent of the total state budget of Indonesia last year. If we project ourselves a bit in the future, this is what we start to see. Uh, we are really starting to see the time where we're going to bring transparency and efficiency in the tax collection. Uh, we prototyped last year, uh, or two years ago, actually, we prototyped. Uh, the idea of paying taxes through a blockchain so that once and for all, everybody can see how much tax is being collected, how much tax is being processed by every single bank, by the treasury, by the tax office, by the customs, so that once and for all, you have a clear monitoring of how much money is going to the state. Today, the process is quite, quite uh, complicated. You have reconciliation issues from, from the treasury to the tax office. And so, we are really trying to implement technology that is, that is trending today to bring transparency in the tax collection. I think that is the second thing uh, why people are not paying. The first one is, of course, uh, I, 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 I don't understand the system. The second that we systematically hear is I, I have no idea what is being done with my money. So if we now we start to, to be able to track, okay, this is exactly how much money the state has been collecting. I think it can also help bring confidence to the citizens that the tax money is going to be used wisely. Uh, we are also starting to get to the point where I think we, we can 
deeply, deeply revolutionize the way economic policy is being done today. If you think about it, today, the, 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 the whole economic policy, wherever it is in the world, is roughly being done once a year. Uh, you have tax rates that are being debated for quite some time. Uh, and then when finally you have agreed on the tax rate, it applies to every single company. Just recently in Indonesia, we are talking about reducing the corporate income tax. Okay, this is, uh, this is simply going to be applied to every single company. You have tax reductions from, for, for some certain industries, but globally the corporate income tax is going to be applied throughout Indonesia for every single company. Now, imagine if we start to think a bit uh, deeper and say, okay, the tax is being completely automated. So anyway, it's based on revenues and incomes and, and expenses and payroll of companies. Uh, now, why don't we start somehow to say, okay, you know, we, we have realized that your company is creating 15 new jobs last year. Why don't we give you a, a tax reduction just for a few months in a manner that is fully automated? Because ultimately, what is the purpose of economic policy if it's not to provide jobs? So we could get to the point where we define the tax rates almost on a daily basis and for every single company there is. So just like for with, with big data today, Amazon and Google, they are able to define the kind of products you are likely to buy and give you some product recommendations. Why don't we do the same for the taxation? Why don't we say we have realized that you're a good corporate citizen, that you're creating jobs, that you're protecting the environment? Why don't we give you a, a lower tax rate compared to companies that have destroyed jobs and don't care about environment? And so that's the, the, the fiscal policy where I think we can really bring something quite interesting in the, in the picture, where rather than having a kind of carpet bombing of tax policy where you have one rate for everybody, we get to the point where we have a personalized tax rate for every single company. Likewise, we can, I think, have a big influence on the fisc on the monetary policy. And, and on that, we've already started uh, working on uh, credit score. And from the credit score, we are able to define the interest rate you're going to have if you have, uh, if you take a loan to the bank. And so these are really the two levels of, of a fiscal and monetary policy of the economic policy. You have the fiscal policy and the monetary policy. And based on what we are working on today, we really start to see the day where we're going to be able to adjust your tax rate and your interest rate in real time, depending on whether you're creating jobs, whether you're protecting the environment, uh, and, and other, of course, parameters. A and that, in terms of economic policy, is going to be an enormous change. But that's exactly where we want to go. Finally, the third thing that we are starting to dream of is the day where we are able to have a kind of participatory, participatory budgeting. Imagine the day where, at the moment you're paying your taxes, you have a nice pop-up with the, with the list of government approved projects for the year. And of course, one of these projects will be actually, I want, uh, I will be the, the government has decided to create a new school in the middle of Papua. Okay, fine. Uh -huh. If you feel that this project is, gone, is interesting to you, then how about if you are able to say, I would like my taxes to be allocated to that project? How? powerful it would be if you could get to that stage where you are able to directly see the impact of you paying taxes. And I think that's really something that we have broken, that, it, that is missed, that has been missed along the years. At, at the beginning, paying taxes is the basic, basic form of being a society. You, you put resources together so that you can share the risks, so that you can prevent disasters from happening, and so that you can make sure that everybody benefits from the society. 
And that is the heart of paying taxes. But, but with the system today, it is so big that you don't even see why you're paying taxes anymore. If we get back to the heart of it, and if we can provide the citizens the full visibility of why they are paying taxes and what is the purpose and the allocation of the funds that they are using, I'm fully convinced that it would give back the meaning, the, the original meaning of being a society and the original meaning of paying taxes. And so that these are really the three things that we are working on today. Uh, the first one is bringing more transparency. The second one is how we can rethink the full economic policy system to make it targeted. Uh, that is really what technology allows us to do is to get something personalized. And so both on tax policy on an, and on monetary policy, we can get to the point where it's personalized. And finally, I really want that we get to the point where we give back meaning to what we to what what it means to pay taxes, basically. And for that, we need to link the expense that that someone is making when they are paying taxes with the benefit for the society. And so we are we are really thinking of a system a bit like a crowdfunding, where where you have the list of projects that the government feels is priority, and then citizens can decide to allocate more or less funds depending on, on the, what they think is a priority for them. Yeah, sure. This is where we are today. Uh, so, so now I, I would love to answer your questions if you have any, uh, but, but really that is, that is how we apply technology today uh, in online project. Yes, uh, I, I would like to uh, conclude your presentations. Um, we've talked about history of how digital transformation started, and you were also mentioned how it started in the first place. And at the end, I'm pretty interested with what you've been mentioning to encourage people to pay taxes um, and to encourage also the, pol the policy system uh, to give back the meaning of why we should pay taxes and link it in, on how it can help uh, society it's, it's pretty interesting for me, actually. Thank so, you. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to uh, accept some, uh, we are going to open a Q&A section. Um, we've been receiving some uh, question from um, Zoom. I would like to, I would like to, um, and I would like to go for, but Ruth Alicia, she's been asking in the Q and A. Uh, would you like to ask Mr. Gino directly? But Ruth Alicia, well, um, I have actually uh, prepared some question to ask because I was wondering um, um, one of. One of the things that I learned uh, that you create the online pajak is because of the struggle on your previous uh, companies to uh, file your taxation because there are various taxation in business sector, right? Um, and then you create online pajak out of that struggle. It is safe to assume that every disruptive technology is distorted or built from uh, the struggle or problem of the people. Mm. I think, well, I mean, this is more a, a, a general uh, question. It's not about technology, but I think if you want to create a company someday, you really need to have the drive. Uh, you really need to make sure that you have a good reason for it. Uh, it's not easy every day and there are ups and downs. Uh, so if you don't have faith in what you are doing, uh, I, I think it's going to be very tough. So generally speaking, you, you need to make sure that you're fighting for the right reason. For, for me, the reason was really just looking at the situation in Indonesia from my own experience. Uh, I, I, know, I knew I could do something, uh, something to help and, and that's how we got started. Uh, and, and for me, every single day when I think about the, 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 the help what, that we need to provide and, and the contribution we can have, uh, I'm more and more and more convinced that uh, that we are fighting for the right reasons. Huh? Okay, so 
I will read a question from Ruth Alicia. It's a pretty long question, but I've tried to read it. Hello, my name is Ruth Alicia. Thank you for your interesting presentation. The first question is, what are the challenges in introducing online pajak to the relevant tax office and to taxpayers in general? There's also three questions, but I think you should answer it one by one. Okay. 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 Um, so I think the challenge is, is uh, it's, it's a lot of components. When, when I think when you're an entrepreneur, your, your main job is to gather the energies in a way, is to bring everybody together. So it's not limited to the tax office or the taxpayer. It's also including uh, shareholders. It's, it's including every form of stakeholders that you can think of. And, and of course, it's a challenge. Uh, it's not going to happen in one day. But if you have faith in what you're doing and if, and if you're consistent and enduring, yeah, people, people will believe in you and little by little you will get there. And then the second question is, why online pajak in a sense that what exactly the problem that it is trying to solve? And this so, yeah, sorry. Okay. The, 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 <laughs> so I'll, I'll answer on this one first. The, really, the main problem that we are trying to solve is increase the tax collection for the country. Uh, there, there is, I think, one study from IMF that says if everybody starts to pay taxes in Indonesia tomorrow, we double the state revenue. So, so it's not something small. Uh, imagine if your school had twice the amount of money, if you had twice more roads, and if you had twice more hospitals. This is really the impact we're trying to have. And that's the heart of what we are doing. Okay. She's also asking, is there any assessment details on how many Indonesian taxpayers who start to report and pay their taxes regularly due to introduction of online pajaka? Today, today, I don't think we are yet at the stage where we extend the tax base, unfortunately. Uh, we're still working with the tax office so that we can actually issue and pay with pay. Uh, that's still not fully fully uh, finalized from the tax office. So we are not completely able to extend the tax base, unfortunately. But at least what we are doing is making sure that the taxpayers that are compliant today are doing it without spending hours and hours and hours in tax compliance. Uh, we, we've seen very, very, very large companies. Uh, they have hundreds or thousands of, uh, of invoices per day. What we've done is we've connected the IT system with our, with our application, with online pajak, and, and now they click once a month to pay their taxes. They click once a month to file their taxes, and that's done. So they went from hundreds of hours to five minutes per month. And that's the impact we are having, basically, today. I, I'm fully convinced, and I hope that it will come soon, that we are at the stage where we can really extend the tax base but for now, we are still working with the GP to, to clear out the, the regulation and technical issues so that we can issue uh, the NPW base for, for, for new taxpayers to join. Okay. Um, also, based on your experience in online pajak, what is next? What needs to be done further to improve the tax reporting and collecting issues based on the issues you encountered? I think so. so the basic, basic thing, the basic components, we have the basic building blocks today of the application. On our side, I think we still have a lot of work to do on the user experience. Again, how can we simplify the process? How can we make it simpler for anyone to understand the thing? Uh, I, I, we have a little support chat, and, and I, when I see the number of questions we are having on that, people simply don't understand the system. They simply don't know what they are supposed to do. So we really, we really need to take them by the hand, uh, drive them through it, uh, so that so that it's not a pain, it's not scary, and it's very easy. I think that's really where, what we still need to do. All right, the last question from Ruth Alicia is, has there been any country who have the level of transparency, as you described earlier, linking expenses to the expenditure? You, you start to see this. Uh, New York uh, has introduced the idea of what we call participatory budgeting, where, where at least a part of the state, uh, the, 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 the budget uh, of New York is up to the citizens to decide, not to the mayor or the city council. 
So, so it's one of the things we are starting to see. I think there are many forms uh, of it, but, but uh, I, I really want to bring it to a next, next stage and next level through technology. All right. Um, one question is from Tantri. I will be asking you directly um, from Zoom, but Tantri. A very good morning, Mr. Charles. Just a simple question. Uh, do you think we're ready for online project as in our as an Indonesian? Uh, since you mentioned about all the um, blackness and all, all the things, uh, negativity that you mentioned before. So do you think we're ready for it? Thank you. I think, honestly, Indonesia, it's not a matter with whether Indonesia is ready or not. It's, it's a matter that Indonesia doesn't have a choice. Uh, I'm, I'm convinced that there is not much time for Indonesia uh, to increase the state revenue. And, and of course, by then, by then uh, increase the spending on the, on the education, on the healthcare, and on the infrastructure. Um, the risk for Indonesia is, is really, really, really for me to be left behind. Uh, again, technological disruption is happening now and it's going to change a lot of things. So if you don't have the social buffers, if you don't have the education system in place to cope with that kind of disruption, it's going to be very tough. Uh, and, and, and so it's not a matter whether we are ready or not. It's a matter of uh, how, how can we make it happen? And, and much sooner than later. All right. Another question from Batilma Komali. Um, she's been raising her hand. Uh, please, Batilma. Hi, Charles. Um, thank you for your explanation. Uh, I'd like to ask us uh, now. I'm now uh, opening your website. Apparently, well, because apparently your services is to calculate uh, the tax of. Um, SMEs and also uh, uh, personals and uh, providing consultancy. So my question is, uh, do you have any challenges in terms of, um, uh, because, because usually in the conventional way, company hire a consultant to do their calculation and now you put it online and there's actually a price for it. So is there any uh, challenges on that side and that is the first question the second one is if then um, I apply or I use online pajak to calculate my tax where my data will go okay, that's so all thank you okay these are two questions so uh, the, the the first one regarding the the, the tax consulting le, 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 uh, um, I don't know if it's not not well written but we are not doing any form of tax consulting uh, on our website. Uh, on the opposite, we are working a lot with tax consultants. We, we've even uh, built a, a very specific application for them. It's a kind of, a, of operating system, if you want, for a tax consultant so that they can manage multiple clients. Uh, they can have dedicated workflows so they can exchange the data and do the tax reporting of their customers uh, through online project. So, so on that, we are, we, we, I mean, it's quite clear for us, we are an IT company. Uh, my, my background is absolutely not in tax. I'm a robotics engineer. And, and honestly, I don't know much about the tax uh, system. Uh, but what I know is, a is, a, is, a, is, a, is how to optimize the process. And, and so on that, we are very clear that we are very good partners for tax consultants uh, and, and we have no ambition uh, to be a tax consultant anytime anytime uh, we are we are working with them and providing them the tools so that they can serve their customers then then in terms of data the, the data basically goes to the tax office uh, but, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure that answers your question uh, if your question is more about the data security then I think we really need to, yeah, is that it? Yeah. it may, uh, my question is more to data security and uh, how then it would be, you know, just because I think one of the one of the idea to accelerate your services to more emissions to pay the tax mm -hmm. is also to convince uh, the user about the data security. So that's where the, I think the, the direction of my question. Thank yeah. you. Okay. 
So in, in terms of data security, you really have somehow two, two questions in one, two, two topics in one. You have the data security and you have the data confidentiality. Uh, data security, it's, it's a technical issue. So we are ISO 27001 certified. That, that's the same level of certification as a bank. Uh, we are regularly uh, audited uh, by the tax office, by, by some of our customers um, to check whether our level of security is enough. And of course, we are self imposing some, some measures uh, for audit and, and control. Uh, we really do a, a comprehensive approach in terms of security. Uh, it goes from, uh, we check uh, if the employees that we are hiring have a police record up to uh, database encryption and network, uh, network encryption. So it's, it's, it, this is how we approach about security. And I would say it's almost a technical or systemic um, approach that we are having to, to, to make sure that we have the proper level of security. When it comes to confidentiality, basically it's quite clear in our terms and condition and, and, and also with the agreement that we have with the tax office, we are simply not authorized to, to share any uh, one taxpayer's uh, financial information uh, without their consent, uh, or, or of course, if we are required by law. So that's that's uh, that's how we approach confidentiality. Uh, we simply cannot do it because it's it's uh, by by without terms and condition we are not authorized to do it basically. Okay, from uh, the question, previous question that have been asked, uh, we've covered to talk about uh, future tax return technology and we also touch how online pajak manage their data and their data security. Um, for the next um, question is, uh, will be move on from the Zoom participant. We'll be receiving question from YouTube live stream. One of the question from Tim Junoski uh, asking on how successful you're, you think was Indonesia's tax amnesty program that started four years ago? Uh, I, think, I think it was quite successful in the sense that it managed to, to map a lot of new taxpayers and a lot of new assets in the system. Uh, I think the repatriation of funds from overseas was, was not uh, up to the level that was expected, but still, I think the, 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 the effect it had, the tax amnesty, is at least, I think, create that culture that, okay, now tax is mandatory. Uh, and, and when I talk with people, I'm, I'm not sure that before the tax amnesty, they were fully, fully aware or, or they were playing not to be aware that, that tax, okay, was, was, was mandatory. Now, with the tax amnesty, there's been so much communication on it that everybody knows that they have to pay taxes. And so I think that was the main success of the tax amnesty. It put, it has put, managed to put tax in the picture of a lot of people. Okay. Uh, another question from um, Rizmi Otleni. He asking as the DGT's partner, what do you think about the digital system in DGT and what must be fixed? So I think, I think that uh, being, being DGT is really not that easy. Uh, honestly, I've had long conversations with them and I understand that it's not that easy. They are trying to, to do something uh, awesome with a lot of constraints and a lot of limitation. Uh, the procurement process in DJP is honestly quite difficult and, and for, for very good reasons, but the reality is that things are a bit slow. Um, and, and I think that's really where we can come in the picture and deliver a solution. We are fully independent. We are a private company. And so us deciding to buy a software or go on the cloud and things like that, is something is a decision we can take in a minute. Uh, whereas for the JP, there would be audits, there would be procurement process, there would be a lot of, of, uh, of systems in place. And I think, again, for good reasons, uh, that, that will for sure make the thing more slow. Uh, I think the approach needs to be parallel. Uh, we, I think, can be a very good weapon in a way to be the front end of, uh, towards the taxpayers and make things very, very simple for them. 
whereas the tax office can be very focused on, on the data, the analytics of that data, the, the refinement of the regulations, uh, so that together we can make something quite, quite interesting, I think. Uh, and, and that's exactly the spirit of the partnership that we have with the DGP today. Okay. Um, also, talk about partnership with online public and uh, Gen Directorate General of, Taxa of Taxation. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to ask a question. What is the challenge and your strategies of digital transformation on taxation, especially in, in Indonesia? I think, I think uh, if I'm being fully honest, I think there's been at some point a, a form of culture shock. Uh, first, I'm not Indonesian, as you, as you might have noticed. Uh, and second, uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, background, again, my, my, my background is absolutely not in tax. Uh, I'm an engineer at heart, and and uh, and what I'm what my mind is made of is processes basically. Whereas most of the people I met in the tax office are, are have a background in taxation, uh, and so there, there's of course been a, a little culture shock. I think little by little, honestly, we've we've now learned to work with with each other, and and now we have honestly a good relationship. Um, there's been there's been a, a, a period of adjustment I think on both sides. Uh, when I when I started the company I was uh, I was a bit younger and I had uh, more energy and I was uh, and I was really pushing uh, to to get things done fast. Uh, I'm still very keen to get to deliver on our mission very soon, but I also understand that there are constraints uh, on on the JP side and that we cannot just. Uh, make things happen in a minute. Uh, so so on, on their side, I think it's the same. They've always, they, they've also learned somehow to work with people like us, uh, with, with small startups. And, and you can really see the, the program, the partnership program of the JP is ramping up with more partners coming in. And so I'm, I'm happy to, to, to see that, uh, that they are also moving on their side. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's it's of course not been easy immediately, and and a lot of it, it, it took us a lot of discussions to get where we are. Uh, but but honestly, if you keep talking, things are always good. No? Uh, it takes some time, but it's there. It's happening. Okay, thank you. Um, um directly. Ms. Jeffy, you can ask your question. Oh, okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, dear. Actually, I, uh, my name is Jeff from Basic uh, School of Government of Public Policy. Uh, since we know that these applications uh, enable the people to pay tax, such as uh, uh, PBB, uh, BPHTB, uh, uh, PPH and all this kind of thing. So uh, my question is, besides to encourage people to pay tax by by doing online, so what do you think, uh, uh, what is the biggest constraint of conducting this these online apps? That is uh, the first question. And the second question is, uh, it's quite the same actually like like Dia said before, uh, what is your strategy for the next five years from now? So, uh, uh, are we going to online uh, for all, all all of the people here? I mean, since we know that uh, it need to be socialized by the by the to socialize these apps because uh, there are so many people. Uh, uh, do not really familiar uh, for using these uh, online apps, and and the third is uh, what do you think about fintech? Is there any relationship between uh, these apps uh, buying tax, uh, uh, paying tax by online, and and uh, fintechs in the future? Uh, 
Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Uh, so the first question regarding the, the, the challenges uh, that, that we are facing or that, that we, we see we, we would be facing, I think the main one somehow is related to your second question. Um, the, the main one I see is that uh, we, we, we are still uh, in, in Indonesia, we are still dealing with, with a good part of the population that doesn't have access to uh, the right, uh, the, I mean, the right connection speed, uh, or, or simply are not fully, fully uh, digital, digital savvy. Uh, and, and I think if we want to deliver on our mission, we also need to be able to talk with these people uh, and get them in the system and convince them, uh, convince them to be in the system. So we, we've explored and we are still exploring quite a good number of what we call offline channels, meaning how can we, uh, uh, I think I think it's already possible, but for example, uh, pay taxes through Alpha Mart or Indomart, uh, so that we are able to talk with people that don't necessarily have uh, have an internet access. Uh, that that's I think is going to be the main challenge. Uh, if we want to really deliver and expand, uh, we'll also have to be able to to talk with them. Um, the the second question. Uh, I'm not sure it was very clear to me. Could you could you rephrase it a bit? Yeah. Uh, do you know fintech fintech ah. lending for SMEs? Yeah. yeah. There is um, really um, you know uh, for the tax revenue mm -hmm. for the government is it's quite high right now. Yeah. So regarding uh, by conducting fintech right now OJK. Otoritas Jasa Keuangan uh, uh, already made a uh, new re regulation uh, right now. So yeah. do, do you think that with this kind of apps uh, will help them to, you know, uh, make it transparent, make it, uh, make it um, more, uh, more, more transparent in the future? Yeah, I think I think so. What, what we are working on with the fintech is mainly how we can uh, provide loans uh, to to some of the taxpayers. Basically, uh, that that's where we are approaching it. For whether it's through peer-to-peer -peer lenders or whether through through traditional lenders, uh, that that's really what we are working on with fintech at the moment. Uh, but I think I think uh, I, I don't know. Honestly, I mean, of course, you you need to classify uh, you need to classify things, but but uh, really in the digital space, everybody is a bit of everything. Whether whether it's a software company, whether it's a fintech, whether it's an e-commerce, sometimes the the boundaries are very very blur, uh, and 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 I think we 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 are also in that light. Uh, very blur. Are we an application? Are we a government service? Are we a fintech? Are we are we a blockchain application? Th these are all the things. Uh, th these are different different things that are different ways of approaching. I think the same topic. Uh, the the only thing that matters is customer experience. Uh, honestly, ultimately. Yeah, I think you're okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, another question uh, from our, our panelists. Uh, from I think you Mbak Ida Yuprasasti. Hello. Hello. So, Thank you very much, Maria. I'm sorry, maybe your connections is not too good, so I cannot hear you, hear you clearly. Yeah. But it's okay, thank you very much. Hello, good I'm morning, Gwyneth. Hello. It's very nice to hear your explanations about um, online pajak since I also interesting in 
um, the kind of hijack things. Um, before I ask the questions, I literally um, tell you about my story during my conversations with my students, which is they are the future taxpayers in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Once um, they said like, uh, it's not important to pay tax because uh, we cannot see what, uh, where the money goes or what the countries, uh, uh, what, what, uh, how the country use the money. So based on that story uh, and your expertise in uh, tax, do you have any idea how to persuade or how to create more understanding or good understanding to the future taxpayers in Indonesia to pay tax? I, I think this is really a, 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 a communication issue. How can we give meaning? Uh, how can we give sense again to the idea of paying taxes and how can we show why people should be paying taxes? And, and so that's exactly what we are what we are trying to explore uh, when we are thinking about participatory budgeting and things like that. Um, I think it's the heart, it's the heart of, uh, of the issue as well. Um, of course, people don't like to pay taxes, but, but uh, if, if it's, uh, if it's a, a hell to go through to pay it, and, and if on top of it, you don't even see where the money is going, then, then for sure you have all the reasons not to pay. And so that's exactly what we're trying to address. Uh, I think giving sense back to giving meaning again to the, to the act of paying taxes is very important for me. Uh, and, and for me, it's a communication thing. How can we link back? How can we communicate that if I pay uh, one juta, uh, that juta is going to be used for, to buy a book in a school somewhere? Uh, that, that's exactly where we want to go. And Alman Paju, do you have uh, any future plans maybe to move to that literacy? Like you provide also uh, literacy for why this is important to pay tax. So good not. Today, today our website is a lot of educational content. Uh, we, we, are, we already have a lot of education content and, and I think we need to go further where we are where we are limited today is that uh, my background is not in tax and, and we, are not, we are not a tax company. So we are working now with, with several partners and several, uh, several stakeholders, including universities, to, to bring more content and more, more education to, the, to, the, to, to what we are publishing. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice day, stay healthy, Mr. Thank you very much, you too. Yes. Um, another one from our panelists is from Mbak Sonia. Mbak Sonia has been asking a question. Mbak Sonia, please, you can turn on, on your microphone and video. Hello? Is my... Is, as you can hear your, your, my voice, or in my voice be late or something. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. One of the question from our uh, Zoom webinar chat. Okay. Um, Mr. Gino, the, did you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Say again. Okay, one of the chat from uh, Zoom webinar chat um, from Mas Dini Contoro, he's asking on, uh, you mentioned about how being digital means simplifying a lot of process. Um, this means you need to have a quite a few good products, researchers and user experience designers on the team. Do you think Indonesia is producing enough tech talent to meet the demand? If not, what is online budget doing to address the digital scale gap? That is the question. Okay. Well, I think I think it's clear that in Indonesia, but Southeast Asia in general, you you have what we call the uh, uh, a talent crunch, meaning you don't have enough talents uh, for for the demand. Uh, that that is for sure. At, at our level, we have we have our own form of training in a way 
where, where when we hire developers when or junior developers or, or product product and, and designers, we really embark them into a training program. Uh, I, I think especially when it comes to user experience and design uh, and research, it, it's a lot. It's a lot of empathy. You really need someone that that loves to to hear about the problems of people. Uh, and, and look for the moment where they say, okay, this I can do better. And, and uh, it's a mindset more than a skill, honestly, uh, especially on that topic, it's really a mindset more than a skill. Um, and, and I've seen people in that topic, user experience or user research come from absolutely all background. Uh, they can come from tech background, uh, they, they can come from a psychiatrist or psychanalyst uh, background. They can come from philosophy. They can come from from a lot of different backgrounds. Uh, it's really people who have the empathy, and who are focused on on uh, on on helping people to solve their problems. Uh, so so that's uh, that I think is a, is more a, a mindset than a skill again. Okay, um, another question from. Um, but Suchi Utami, she would like to ask a question to you directly. But Suchi Utami, you can uh, ask the question. Yeah, hello. 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 Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the pajak as a global in Indonesia. Uh, and yeah, can you translate for me? Oh sure. Go ahead. I'll, I'll try. I'll try to understand <laughs> <Sure>. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, 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 I don't. I, I don't. Uh, uh, I don't think that uh, Indonesia ready to online pajak as a global, like a business or business or uh, the business to the personal, because there is any gap of infrastructure, there is any gap of tools, and there is any gap of literacy on pajak. So. Uh, what do you think about this? For, for sure, uh, li like I mentioned earlier, uh, I think if we if we want to be able to deliver on our mission, we we absolutely need to be able to talk to people who don't have access to internet. Uh, that that is clear for me, and and offline channels are going to be a, a key component of our strategy on the long run. Now. Um, but, but for now, we do we do what we know to. What we know best is really we are focused online, uh, but, but uh, offline channels, we are already exploring them. We've prototyped a few things and, and we've seen some good results. Uh, now, now we're going to scale them, basically. No? And uh, how about the system integration? Like, uh, which I know, know every, uh, I mean, every commentarian have a, uh, have uh, like uh, it is okay if I I, I use my bahasa Indonesia. <laughs> coba coba aja. Yeah. Okay. Jadi uh, yang, yang 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 saya tahu adalah saat ini semua kementerian atau dinas mempunyai sistem masing-masing yang tidak terintegrasi. Jadi itu menjadi salah satu permasalahan yang sangat uh, dasar yang yang membuat uh, rasanya akan sulit untuk bisa Uh, membuat masalah perpajakan ini menjadi online itu jadi bukan hanya sekedar uh, terkait internet saja online uh, tapi terkait dari sistem dan infrastrukturnya seperti itu. Yeah, I think I think so. The, the, I think it's honestly everywhere. It's not only in Indonesia that that uh, the administration is not fully connected. Uh, it's it's normal uh, friend, friends uh, from I can tell you because I, I've seen it uh, with my own eyes friends also is, is suffering the exact same problem where, where you have what you call silos of information uh, the social security is not sharing the same information than the, the fiscal administration uh, which again is not sharing the, the same uh, the same information with the the, the identity card registration, for example. Uh, this is everywhere, and, and somehow it's, I would say, it's normal. Uh, 
uh, I think every government is quite aware of that issue and, and everybody is working towards that. Um, it's, this is, I think, exactly where we, the private sector, we can have an impact. We, honestly, uh, simply because we are independent, we are free to work and partner with every government agency. So we can easily make that bridge so that the citizen benefits from an experience that is, uh, that is a bit uh, more smooth. This is really what we call, uh, of course, you, you, we mentioned earlier the fintech, but now you have really something that is called reg tech, uh, regulation technology. And I think we are really quite aligned with, the, with what they are trying to do is how can the, 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 the private sector bridge the silos, improve the experience for the citizens what, wherever, the, where they, wherever they are in the world. Uh, I think that's really, uh, that's really what we're trying to do. Uh, and, and I agree with you, it's not only a matter of being, uh, of, of being online or, or, or something like that. It's a comprehensive approach, but, but it's a cycle, basically. If, again, if you have no tax, you have no infrastructure. And, and of course, included in the infrastructure, you don't have internet. So we need to bring revenue so that eventually there will be there will be uh, internet reaching out even the most remote areas of Indonesia. And the last one about the policy. So uh, the above all, uh, about the infrastructure, about the system integration, about the data integration, uh, there is any regulation that must we create for this one? So uh, what do you think about the policy in Indonesia, uh, both all and pajak? I think the policy uh, somehow, uh, first, I'm not an expert in policy. Again, I'm an engineer, not a tax expert. But from what I've understood, the, the, the tax rates are globally on par with what you see in Southeast Asia. So I don't think there is an enormous need to, to change dramatically uh, the tax rates or, or the policy. Um, if you're a small company, less than uh, 4.8 billion rupiah of revenue today, you pay 0.5% of your sales. So I don't think I don't think the rate is an issue here. The, the main issue for this type of company is is that the payment of, of that that 0.1% is complicated. And so we really, really, really need to work to make it very, very simple for them to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go back to the question from Mbak Sonia. Uh, I think her microphone is um, turned off and she chose to let me read the question. So the first question is, is this app or online pajak system or app has been tested to Indonesian people prior to launching it? Uh, I mean, we, we are con continuously testing in a way. Uh, that, that's what I shared uh, at the beginning. Uh, we made very, very simple tests at the beginning that was simply to have a website, even if we didn't have the application and we somehow tested that there was demand for that kind of application. Then finally, we launched the application and we tested somehow some user flows to see what is the simplest version that we can have so that it's easy for, for the users to understand. And now we are testing and testing again and again and again and again. So we, we are systematically testing. Uh, it's never a finished product and we are always, always trying to refine it. And, and therefore we, we are systematically testing. All right. Um, the second question is, is there any training conducted to the entire tax officer and the people as the end user? If not, how do you plan to do that? So we today we don't provide training for the tax officers uh, simply because it's not an application somehow that is made for them. It's made mainly for the taxpayers, whereas the TGP on their back end they have their own application where they can view uh, more channels and more, more sources and more, more data than what online pajak alone is giving them. So, so, so we 
don't necessarily train the, of the tax officers on that. Uh, we've conducted socializations with them. We've conducted uh, some, some seminars or, or some events together with the tax officers in the KPPs to inform the taxpayers that this kind of application was existing. Uh, this we've done, but, but we haven't made an application for the tax officers because again, they have other, other channels that they are also looking at. So, so, yeah. Uh, that, okay, that's... I would like. Okay, I finished. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, I would like to go back to the first question that I asked about how this uh, the challenge the uh, transformations. Um, sorry, say again. Earlier. The talk for Indonesian people. How your one of one of the uh, challenges that you as when you build a platform technologies um, for taxations is the call to know you face the challenge. Yeah. Or has you promote to people or do ads in television or something like that? Um, sorry, I, I'm not sure I, I heard your, your your question very clear. Uh, the connection was a bit bad. Do you do you mind eventually putting okay. it on the on the chat? Uh, okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. This way, um, this way again. Yeah. Um so my voice is still not clear. So, 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 so. <laughs> Let's try, but uh, so, so. Okay, okay. I will um, wait. Um, okay. Okay. It's still not clear. I have to uh, fuse on. Okay. Yeah, let's try. Uh, yeah. Do you still? Oh, it's better. Okay. Yeah, it seems better. Uh, regarding yeah. of the question, you, regarding of the question that I asked earlier earlier about the challenges that you face in building a digital transformation on taxation in Indonesia. Uh, you mentioned earlier that it was a cultural shock. Um, I would like to ask if there are uh, strategies or any of this or strategies that you use and what are you from uh, so many years you've been in in, in in helping us prepare our taxation. Oh, honestly, there's not been a, a strategy. Uh, I think it's mainly communication. It's it's honestly it's a human communication, and and, uh, and uh, yeah, that, that that's more uh, that's more effective than I think any form of strategy. It, it's honestly been a learning for me as well. Huh? Uh, I, I, I think I think uh, clearly I've made progress uh, working with them. They they've also evolved on their side. And I think altogether we managed to have something quite nice now. Um, so it's, I, I didn't have and I don't have uh, any form of strategy. Uh, it's, it's a continuous improvement and a continuous collaboration and communication more, more than anything else. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Another question from Batilma is asking on beside working on on with Dirigen Dirigen Pajak, any other ministry that online Pajak is currently having partnership with? Uh, other ministries, uh, actually, we have we have quite a few. We have uh, Cominfo. We have. Uh, it's, even if it's not a, a ministry, it's an agency. We have Bank Indonesia, we have OJK. Uh, for all of them, we are, of course, licensed uh, because, because we need to, to work together with them to make it happen. 
uh, inside the Ministry of Finance, we are working, of course, with the JP, but also with the with the Treasury, uh, because when we want to be able to process tax payment, uh, actually the money does the cash doesn't go to the tax office; it goes to the Treasury. So yeah, we are working with quite a number of government uh, entities, uh, but but also with the non non government entities or NGOs. I think what we are touching on is uh, so important that we need to make sure that we are aligned with every every stakeholder, uh, and so therefore we are really working with a lot of people now. Okay. Um, another question from uh, her: Before online pajak, what sector were you having company of? Uh, it was manufacturing. Yeah, mechanical components for, for okay. cars, for planes, uh, really heavy industry. And what really tip you off to create online pajak is because the struggle of filing taxation in Indonesia. Yes, right. it, it was too much for me. I'm, uh, I'm probably the worst tax complier, taxpayer that is in terms of compliance. And, and, uh, and yeah, I'm just not, uh, I, I just don't like that. So, so it was too much of a pain for me. That's how, that's how we got started. Yeah, it's really interesting for me. Okay, uh, another question for me is actually, um, tax administration are increasingly moving to e-administration and by using a range of technology tools and resources and analytics related to tax compliance, how technology changed the tax compliance landscape, especially in Indonesia? Uh, that, that, that's, that's exactly what we are doing in a way. Um, I'm not sure I, I fully understand the question. Um, um, it's more likely to, um, is, is, is the application of, or the, web, the website of online pajak has been helping to increase the tech compliance in Indonesia kind of things? And if so, do you have like a behavior uh, research on that? We, we don't or, have the, yet that data, uh, unfortunately, and it's quite tough to get it properly. We are, we are still working on it. I think the main effect I would like to see is at least the day we are authorized to issue NPWP is at least the increase in, in, uh, in the tax base, basically. Um, but, but today, the change in behavior, the time that, that, that companies are, were spending before us uh, and, and so on, it's, it's honestly not easy to get that form of data. But, uh, but uh, I think it would be very interesting as a report, but, uh, but we don't exactly know how to. We're considering to have that in the future. I would love to have it. Uh, I would really love to have that, but but it's a really, I think, intense research that needs to be to be put there. Uh, and and comparing, uh, we, I mean, it's important to compare apples to apples. Uh, if you if you look back uh, five or ten years ago, the tax policy, the the compliance requirements were not exactly exactly the same. Uh, so, so whether it's the impact of online pajak or whether it's the impact of policy change is, is not always easy to know. Oh, sure. Um, regarding to, I would like to um, talk about more on the security because mm -hmm. um, talking about taxes, we're very concerned about our um, private data, right? Mm -hmm. So um, as you mentioned earlier that you, uh, online pajak have a very um, uh, uh, have a very uh, strong concern on the security of our data. And how would you build the trust in, in, uh, for Indonesians people to basically your, use your platform and online data? So how, how we, I think, I think uh, the, the, the trust is, uh, is uh, long to build and easy to lose, but, but, uh, Today, we are really working with the, with the biggest companies you can think of in Indonesia. Uh, a, a, a lot of the fintech or, or startups or unicorns that are in the country are using us on a daily basis. Uh, that, that is somehow the best proof I have to, to, to show that, uh, that we, are, we are secure. 
I think these kind of companies have, of course, done a, a comprehensive due diligence uh, on us. Uh, and, and if they are happy with what they found, it means that somehow we are not doing something completely stupid. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's the best proof we have in, in terms of, uh, of how we operate, I think, and it's the number of customers. Uh, we have we have about uh, today 80,000 companies using our system on a monthly basis. Uh, you have you have 500,000 corporate taxpayers in the country and 80,000 of them are, are using us. So almost 20% of them are going through online pajak to file their taxes today. Okay. I would like to... Um talk about your security system in detail actually because mm -hmm. um, it's pretty concerning for me. Um, yeah. Did you have like um, details on how uh, you train uh, the staff inside the online budget and any like uh, uh, standard uh, operation kind of things? So, okay, so, so basically security is really everywhere. Uh, it, it's not just uh, staff or some, something like that. Uh, it's it's really embedded in everything we do. So when we hire someone, I was mentioning we are look, we are checking the police record of these employees before we get them on board uh, to see if there is nothing wrong in there. Uh, it's in in no one in our in our company has a direct access to the production database. And any developer is working on a development environment. And then finally, when they are ready and when they think the application is ready, they are publishing the code to the what we call the production environment. And that production environment has access to the production database. But no developer has a direct access to the production database. Same, we have a, a, what we call the single sign-on, meaning when, when someone wants to use any of our system, whether it's the internal messaging tool, whether it's the email, whether it's to see some, some metrics about the application inside the, the company, they have to log in with a, with a user password. And, and uh, as soon as someone is no longer part of the company, the login and password is deactivated so that they can no longer have access to any tool in the company. Uh, so, so you see, it's really a comprehensive thing. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not just uh, checking uh, who has access to what and, and what what kind of encryption you have on the database. It's it's absolutely everything that needs to be taken comprehensively to evaluate what are the risks and what are the the the, 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 the potential uh, potential criticity of that risk, and then you from there you define the measures basically. Okay, thank you. Yeah, That's that. enough if we talk about the security. Okay, okay. Security system. Um, I would like to ask more on your views on the future digital technology. Mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah. How, how is your view of digital, uh, the next digital technologies? Are, are we going to develop to be more um, transparent or, um, or something like that? I think, I think you, you have, uh, you have, Two, two trends like in any technology, but you have two potential uh, two potential paths. One, uh, honestly, is, an, is a quite amazing path. I, I was sharing earlier, earlier at the beginning of my presentation that, that all the technologies, all the domains, all the different dimensions of, of research today are, are coming together. Uh, and that is for me something that is quite fascinating and, and really with, with internet again today, you are really uh, every single one of you. You are really able to learn on anything, and, and that is for me something that is absolutely amazing, and, and that is endless. Uh, I, I could really spend my entire life learning new things and new technology online, uh, and, and that is that, that has become super simple. So, so that is really I think the future where we are going. You will see more and more and more discoveries, more and more fundamental research and more and more technical applications of this research uh, coming to life. Now, in terms of where we are going as a society uh, with this technology, I think you clearly have two trends. Uh, you have 
the potential risk on, on, on your own uh, privacy, uh, on, on, on population control, uh, mass manipulation and fake news and these kind of things. But you also have an enormous potential application for more democracy, for more transparency, with citizens fact-checking what their governments are telling them. Uh, you, you, you can really uh, you can really see the both dimensions, and I think uh, it's it's still up to 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 be decided which path are we are going to enter. You know. Okay. Okay, enough the question for me, I think. Uh, let we open the question for the panelists. Um, but Ratno Indrawati will ask the question directly to you. Please, Mbak Ratno. Morning, bonjour, sir. How are you? Come on, Taba. I would like uh, about the uh, picture of uh, your web page platform, right? So, uh, is there any uh, specific feature uh, uh, for uh, online and also uh, what market or potential user of this uh, uh, tools? Uh, is it uh, only for companies or or for individual uh, users? What do you think about uh, how to support the uh, users which are not uh... Hello, Bertno? I think we cannot hear your voice very clearly. I think you should check your microphone. Hello. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's clear. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, previously, I'm using speaker, Bluetooth speaker. So, uh, <laughs> hear my voice? Yeah, better. Sampai di mana tadi ya? So, I would like to ask uh, first is uh, what is exactly the specific feature of this uh, online based, a uh, web based uh, platform? And um, what are the specific users of this um, online pajak? I mean, uh, do you do you uh, intend this uh, to be used by uh, companies or also for individual payers? And uh, what do you think about uh, your strategy to reach out all of the user, especially individual user who are not get used yet to this um, online things? That's all. Okay. Okay. Um, so the, thank the you, first, th thanks. Thanks for the question. The, the, the first question regarding the features. Um, let me just take note of your three questions. Um, the first question regarding the features. So today, today, basically, if you want to, to, to just simply be compliant with your taxes, um, you have to use a software that's uh, that's called uh, most of the time ESPT or eFactor. You have a, you have a collection of software. Uh, then you need to get an IDB link. Then you need to go to the bank. Then you need to do your filing. And, and so what we've done, the main main heart of the application is simply replace all these softwares and combine all of them into one single application. So that really you don't have to use different disconnected software and re-input the same data multiple times. It's all integrated and it's all in, it's all done in a few clicks, basically. That, that I think is the heart in terms of features of what we are doing. Uh, we, we make all your tax return preparation and calculation, then you pay them in one click. And then finally, you can report them directly to the tax office in one click. Um, that, that is what we are doing. We are, uh, and I'm going back to your second to your second question. We we are serving basically three types of population. We have, of course, the corporate taxpayers. We also have individual taxpayers, and we have tax consultants. These are really the three segments I would say that we are serving. Uh, so so we don't we don't have really um, really too much of a limitation there. Uh, finally, in terms of of communication strategy. 
uh, I think today we, we the main main communication tool that people can find is to is to build an interesting content. Uh, that's always what we've been doing. We are really, really, really trying to make our blog as interesting and as educative as we can, uh, so that if someone wants to learn how to pay taxes, they quickly find us and they can really uh, quickly quickly learn how to do it with our application. So that's always been our communication strategy, and uh, and that will stay that will stay true. Huh? Okay, thank you for answering the question. Um, another question from uh, our YouTube live stream from Mas Aris Hartono. He asking on how do you think about the adoption of blockchain's technology in, ta in taxation so that we can track where every money comes from and where exactly they're used for accountability purposes. So that, that, that's exactly what we have, uh, what we've done. Uh, we, we build the blockchain, so it's not a public blockchain, of course, it's a private blockchain, so that every form of tax payment that is done through our application is systematically recorded in the ledger uh, blockchain, basically, that, that is uh, tamper-proof, so that no one can, can reverse, uh, reverse the record, and therefore, you have a full traceability and a full visibility on how much tax is being collected. Um, we are still rolling it out with the government. Uh, we've deployed one node so far in one of the government agencies. And of course, we are trying to push to get more. I think uh, it's, it's a new technology, blockchain, and finding the right application for it is not easy. And, and of course, there is an enormous amount of, of education that needs to be done if you want to deploy that technology uh, properly. But, but I think it's a, it's a very cool tech. Uh, it's a very cool piece of tech if we, if we want to achieve something interesting in terms of transparency. Uh, of course, it's a, it, it's a long way, it's a long march to make sure that uh, everybody understands it and everybody is aware of it so that we, we, we can all benefit from it. Right, thank you. Um, another question from me actually is, in your opinion, uh, when there's uh, so many sectors in Indonesia, um, which sector that hasn't touched digitals or it hasn't used the digital transformation, um, uh, and you think, but you think it is will be very useful and ben benefit for them in terms of efficiency and productivity? Oh, I think honestly, today every sector has is using a form of technology. Um, I see tech in uh, agribusiness, I see tech in retail, uh, even, even uh, somehow objects have been, have been uh, transformed by technology thanks to Grab and Gojek. Um, so, so there is really no one left that has not been impacted already by the technology, I think. Huh? Okay. Um, the, the, the recording have, of you, the digital yeah. transformation, we. Go ahead, okay, David. we can continue. Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, digital transformation, we get used to um, changes every time. Do you think um, it will, um, if, 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 if there are so many things that change, uh, do you think it will disrupt the society somehow? It, it will disrupt the society. I have absolutely no doubt on that. And that's exactly why you need to have a social framework that provides buffers uh, to, for that kind of disruption. Really, the, 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 I'm, I'm very, very scared in, in the job creation. Uh, when, you look, when you look down 30 years from now, I'm honestly quite skeptic of how many jobs are still going to be created by then. Um, and so if you don't have a social system in place, uh, you, you really, really, it's going to be very tough. And, and a simple system is not going to be enough. Uh, you have, and, and for good reason, I think some of the most uh, advanced pioneers in tech, in robotics and so on, that are, that are advocating for, for things like uh, universal income and, and, and things like that. And I think it's for good reason. Uh, and and uh, we, we are at our own little level really trying to make sure that we can deliver this. We are in the position to deliver this. 
because there is enough revenue for the state. If you have no tax coming in, uh, yeah, it's going to, I think it's going to be very tough for the society to cope with something that is going to be uh, insane, insane amount of inequalities. Right, sure. It's pretty interesting for me um, as, um, as a millennial that after we graduate and then uh, we land on our first job, then turns out we have the um, opportunity, our have the obligation to pay taxes. And if the tax is still in the manual uh, way that we need to go to the taxation office um, every time we need to manage our taxes, I don't think more millennials will be paying their taxes. Uh, for, for me, for me, I, I, I really like to look at companies like Stripe, uh, you know, the payment, the payment company. It's a, it's a very cool, uh, very cool company. A and they are basically processing payments where so that you as a company can be paid by your credit card or by, uh, pay, by PayPal and things like that. But, you know, this company, uh, and it's the same for Google, for Amazon, for every single tech company, when you make a transaction with them, they take a cut. Uh, and that's how they make revenue. And, and so what, what I'm thinking is why can't we design a tax system that simply takes a cut? Uh, when, when I'm buying something on Google or Amazon or anything, uh, I, I don't have to have a tax ID. Uh, I don't have to pay my cut, my, my, the, the revenue of Amazon separately, and I don't have to give them any form of report. Why can't we design a tax system that, that simply takes a cut where there is no reporting, there is no payment, there is no registration anymore because the system is simply hardwired into every single transaction that moves. That, that is the kind of system we are thinking of. Uh, we, are, we are, I think, uh, millions of years from that uh, when, when you still have to, uh, to fill up a form, basically. Huh? It's, it's really something that is, that is uh, that is not what it's supposed to be today. Okay, actually, I'm waiting for the answer from our, the question from our panelists and our attendees. Um, I hope you guys can um, raise your hand if you would like to ask question. And from our YouTube live, you guys can ask question and I will be um, helping you to read or directing the question. Okay. Close. Um, I actually uh, wanted to ask you about uh, what is the, uh, the next feature from online pajak that we can, I mean, is there any uh, some of some feature that we can wait from the online pajak release. Uh, I think it, this is more towards the end of the towards the end of the year, but uh, we are really starting to work on on tools that really 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 simplify the way you do your tax compliance, uh, based on a lot of of uh, big data and artificial intelligence. We are really trying to help you. Uh, fill your tax forms, your tax data automatically. And, and that is really something that uh, should come up at the end of the year in our platform. That, that is for me the most uh, funny and interesting uh, tool that we are working on at the moment. Okay. Um, uh, from you personally, I would like to ask, is there any future plan that you will be moving to another sector other than taxation? Uh, for sure, for sure, there are there are there are lots of opportunities everywhere, and and uh, and and again, the technology is uh, is hap the, the disruption is happening everywhere. So 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 I'm, I'm I, I I just love to learn and, and discover new fields. So so I will continuously look for different topics, but but I think tax is going to take me to keep me busy for quite some time. I think uh, it's quite it's quite interesting. Oh. The, the job we have left to do is is uh, is quite uh, it's quite enormous. So so I think we're still in for for quite some time. All right, 
Um, last but not least, the last question is for me also again. Um, as we are the students from SGPP learning on public policy, do you have any last statement or messages for us, hopefully, the future policymaker? I think is really, I mean, you're, you're, you're today very lucky to be learning, to be dedicate, dedicated to learning, dedicating your life to learning, or, or at least a, a part of your life to learning. The, the most important thing for you is, is that school doesn't end when you're actually out of school. You really, really need to keep learning uh, because change is happening very, very fast. And, and it's, it's an amazing opportunity that we have today where we can all learn things online. Uh, so, so I can only encourage you to keep systematically learning and learning even when you're out of school, simply because it's so much fun. Okay, thank you very much. With the last question answered, I would like to close to the sessions. Um, uh, a more question will be, I'm sorry if I cannot address uh, more question from the audience due to our limited time. I'm sorry for not bringing up your question on the table. Lastly, I'm appreciated your time and preparation for this public lecture, Mr. Gino. Thank, thank you, you for much. your amazing and informative presentation. To you. Thanks to you, Dia for, for yep. doing a good and, job. Oh, thank you. And your clear explanation on answering the question. Um, for a closing statement, I would like to point out that in the world full of disruptive uh, technology, we are asked to get used to the changes. But the question is, are we driving the changes or are we driven by it? Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day and stay safe. Yes, stay safe. Have Bye -bye. a good day. Thank you. Thank you, dear.